Welcome back, Defenders. Jake here. I've got some sad news, but then I've got some really good news. Pretty much the best news I could possibly give you. So the sad news, Russian missile strike in Chernihiv kills 17 people, injuring an additional 78. City declares a day of mourning. This was a terrorist attack that killed 17 civilians, injured an additional 78. If this had happened in any other major European city, if this had happened in London or Paris or Berlin, this would be the number one news story in the world. But because it's the Russians doing it to Ukraine, and they've been doing it to Ukraine for over two years now, the mass media isn't even covering this event. So Chernihiv is a huge city, almost 300,000. It's almost the same size as the city of Kherson. And Chernihiv is located north of Kyiv. So here is the Belarus border. Here is Russia. And you can see from this green shading that when Russia launched their invasion, they couldn't take the city of Chernihiv. Chernihiv resisted. They didn't surrender. The Russians had them surrounded for weeks. And the people of this city never gave up. Unfortunately, right now, Ukraine is out of air defense systems, and the Russians are devastating this city. There are videos online. I'll link them down below if you want to see it for yourself. Russia did bomb the hospital in Chernihiv. This is their current strategy. Bomb as many hospitals as they can. Kill all the doctors. Kill all the EMT first responders. Kill as many civilians as possible. Russia is a terrorist state. And I have to put a face on these victims. Just saying the number 17 doesn't mean anything. But this is one of the people who died. 25-year-old policewoman, Alina Maklitz. And she's been a police officer in the city of Chernihiv for a year now. At the time of the strike, she was in her car, next to the site of the attack. A fragment from a Russian missile pierced through the roof of her car, and struck her in the head. Zero missiles left. Zelensky says Ukraine's air defense resources are depleted. Here's a clip from PBS NewsHour. I want you guys to hear this from President Zelensky himself. I will give you one example, a very simple example. The Trapilska power plant. Electricity in the Kyiv region depends on it. Eleven missiles were headed towards it. The first seven we took down. Four destroyed Trapilska. Why? Because we had zero missiles. We ran out of all missiles. You know, when someone says that... So the Trapiska power plant south of Kyiv was destroyed because Russia fired 11 missiles at it. They only had seven left. So four hit the power plant. Ukraine needs these missiles today. No chance of winning without U.S. aid. President Zelensky has said this before, but he's saying it again this week because this is the week. We're finally having the debate. We're finally having a vote. U.S. House set to vote on Ukraine aid bill on Saturday evening. Today is Thursday, so in two days. The House of Representatives is debating it now, offering amendments, but the final vote's it's a countdown. It, it will trigger. It will happen on Saturday evening. So yes, uh, it's four separate bills now. One for Ukraine, one for Israel, one for Taiwan, and then a, a, a catch-all for random stuff. But they're going to vote on all four on Saturday evening. And I'm going to share a clip of Mike Johnson. But I want to remind everyone why I've been so hard on this guy the last six months. This is the website Republicans for Ukraine giving their report card on how Republican members have voted the last two years concerning Russia and Ukraine. Mike Johnson's report card is an F for very poor. Up until this week, he has never supported Ukraine. So this is why I was shocked to see this video. Uh, it's 57 seconds. You need to hear this for yourself. I, I'm doing here what I believe to be the right thing. 
Um, I think pr providing lethal aid to Ukraine right now is critically important. I really do. I really do believe the intel and and the briefings that we've gotten that G, that, um, that I, I believe Xi and, and and Vladimir Putin and and Iran really are an axis of evil. I think they're in coordination on this. I think that Vladimir Putin would continue to march through Europe if he were allowed. I think he might go to the Balkans next. I think he might have a showdown with Poland or one of our NATO allies. Uh, to put it bluntly, I would rather send bullets uh, to Ukraine than American boys. My son is going to begin in the Naval Academy this fall. This is a live fire exercise for me as it is so many American families. This is not a game. It's not a joke. We can't play politics with this. We have to do the right thing. And I'm going to allow an opportunity for every single member of the House to vote their conscience and their will on this. And I think that's the way this institution is supposed to work. And I'm willing to take personal risk for that because we have to do the right thing and history will judge us. If you believe that shape-shifting lizard people are replacing all of our political leaders, then they just got Mike Johnson. I don't know who this guy is, but I'm going to take him. He's saying all the right stuff. For the first time in seven months, he's saying the right things. Putin is not going to stop. He's going to keep going. If he attacks a NATO country next, then it will be U.S. service members forced to go fight. It sounds like Mike Johnson's son is a senior in high school, 18 years old, and he's going to be attending the United States Naval Academy in uh, Maryland. So yes, if we don't stop the Russians today, then Mike Johnson's son might have to go fight in this war in Europe two years from now, four years from now, five years from now. The Russians are never going to stop unless we stop them today. So as long as Mike Johnson is saying the correct things now, I'm not going to criticize or attack this guy. I'm not going to forgive him for what he's done the last six months. But I am going to back off if he continues these talking points. And Mike Johnson could have just hidden from the media. He could have scheduled the vote and then refused to talk to anyone. But he's actually going on the cable news networks to talk directly to the American people. And once again, he's now saying all of the correct things. So here's him once again doing an interview, but this time for CNN. What, uh, that's what they desire. Now listen, we made a better product as well, because there is, Ukraine, as you know, is controversial. What we did, Jake, in this package, we changed it. 80% of the spending for Ukraine is replenishment of American weapons and, and stocks. That's a really important thing for our own U.S. industrial base and, uh, and defense base, and, and that's going to be a very important part of it. And Yes, this is not a blank check. This is not free money to Ukraine. 80% of this $60 billion stays in the United States. We give Ukraine old weapons, weapons we built in the 80s and 90s that are towards the end of their service life anyways. We then allocate money to ourselves to buy better new equipment for our own military. This is a win for Ukraine. It's a win for the United States military. So somebody on Twitter asked me who threatened him, who got to Speaker Johnson, and I still think the answer is AIPAC. Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, and the United States hasn't passed a military aid package to Israel in seven months, because President Biden and the Democrats said, we're not going to pass military aid for Israel unless you also pass aid for Ukraine. So I think after waiting for seven months, AIPAC called Trump, AIPAC called Speaker Johnson, and they said enough of this. Iran is our enemy. Iran is militarily allied with the Russians. We need to get this done. On top of that, the discharge petition is still there. If anything goes wrong in the next week or two, the discharge petition can still go to 218 and can still trigger. So I think there were 23 House Republicans that went to Speaker Johnson and said, either you can be the hero, you can be the guy leading the charge, or we're going to do this despite you. We're going to sign the discharge petition and pass the Senate's version of the bill. So Speaker Johnson had no choice but to flip. I also want to hopefully give Speaker Johnson credit and... He has been listening to 
the national security officials that brief him every day. U.S. House Intelligence Committee says, critical need for Ukraine this week. And there's two House Republicans I want to personally thank. Michael McCall from Texas. He's the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And Mike Turner. He is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. These two guys, I don't know why they're all named Mike, but these two guys have been hounding Mike Johnson for months, saying you have to do this. You have to do the right thing. And there's something called the President's Daily Brief. This is a top-secret document produced and given to the President every morning, informing the President about what is China doing, what is North Korea doing, what is Iran doing, what is Russia doing. And the House gets this same briefing. It's called the Gang of Eight Intelligence Briefing. This is the leaders of both houses for both parties, plus the ranking members on the Intelligence Committee. So this would be Mike Turner. And Mike Turner and Speaker Johnson sit, on, sit in on this intelligence briefing every day. So for the other members of the House, you know, there's 500 members of Congress or whatever, they don't get all of this information. But the people at the highest levels of our government do. And the director of the NSA, the director of the CIA, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, have all been screaming at Johnson for months to get this bill passed. So it's happening. I waited today to look it over and get other people's opinions. And this House bill more or less is the same as the Senate bill, and actually a little bit better. Biden has endorsed it. He said the House and the Senate should pass this. He'll sign it. No problems. Here's the statement put out by President Biden saying this is going to happen. And here's a breakdown of the bill, if you want to see exactly where all the money is going. So we can go line item one here. This is for the Army. $207 million. So something from the Army is going to be sent to Ukraine. The Army then has the money to buy something brand new from Northrop Grumman or Lockheed Martin or General Dynamics. These are American defense companies. When we scroll to the bottom, you can see Economic Support Fund, $7.8 billion. This will be direct economic aid for Ukraine. We then have Foreign Military Finance Program, $1.6 billion. That's really the only money being given to Ukraine. But the rest of it is managed more or less by the EU. Money not going to the Department of Defense goes to basically transport the stuff over there. The European Union then manages the economic aid, once again, to avoid any allegations of corruption from the Ukrainian government, which there's no proof or evidence that any funds allocated from the United States has been misused. This bill, though, is different from the Senate in that it's a loan. It's not direct military aid. But the president has the ability to cancel 50% of the loan after November 15th. And if I'm being honest, nobody in America expects Ukraine to ever pay this back. Perhaps if Russia is resoundingly defeated and they want economic sanctions taken off of them, the United States can insist they pay back this military aid package. So that could happen at some point in the future. Funds are available for the rest of this year. Some parts extend to 2026. There is a provision that within 45 days of passage, the DOD has to come out with a strategy to combat Russian aggression. But overall, this is a good bill. And there's attackums included. Mike Turner demanded that this be in the bill. This wasn't in the Senate's version. So here's the language transfer of long-range attackums is required. This would be federal law. Biden would have to comply. And it's to uh, achieving victory against the Russian Federation. Wow. So how can this go wrong? How can this be stopped? And at the moment, MAGA Republicans in the House 
they want to remove Speaker Johnson to stop this vote. The problem is, is the Democrats have said they're going to keep him there. The Democrats to embarrass Marjorie Trader Greene and Matt Gates, if they try to remove their own speaker, they're going to vote to keep him there. These motions to vacate the chair only pass if every Democrat votes with Matt Gates and Marjorie Trader Greene. So this is hilarious to watch as an American, just seeing the Republican Party destroy itself and fight with each other. And the Democrats don't care if Speaker Johnson stays in the chair through the November election. The debt ceiling has been raised. The budget has been passed. They're not going to impeach Biden. There's, they found no evidence. And if they pass this military aid bill for Ukraine, there's nothing else the Democrats want for the rest of this year. If Speaker Johnson wants to spend the rest of the year talking about refrigerator rights and laundry liberty and frappuccino machine freedom, go ahead. So here is a reaction from a very conservative Republican. This is Dan Crenshaw. Uh, and this is his thoughts on MAGA wanting to remove Speaker Johnson if he allows this vote to happen. I guess their reasoning is they they want Russia to win so badly that they want to house the speaker over it. I mean, that's a, it's a strange position to take. Um, and, uh, you know, I think... I think they want to be in the minority, too. I think that's an obvious reality. I'm still trying to process all the bullshit. So. I'm still trying to process all the bullshit. Uh, Dan Crenshaw, once again, very conservative American, but he's a former Navy SEAL. This man's not a traitor to his country. Not like the Queen, Marjorie Trader Green. She's having a meltdown on social media. No money for Ukraine. The American people demand a peace deal between Ukraine and Russia. No more death, no more murder. So the MAGA members of the House in protest are proposing all these stupid amendments. They're all going to fail, but Marjorie introduced this one. Any member of Congress who votes in favor of this act shall be required to conscript in the Ukrainian military. There's a bunch of other proposed crazy amendments from MAGA members. They're all going to fail. Talking about Nazis and biolabs and um, Ukraine has to first ban abortion before they can receive any aid. So these are all going to fail. None of these are going to be included in the bill. Here's an opinion headline from Fox News. Marjorie Taylor Greene is an idiot. She is trying to wreck the Republican Party. So what's the next step? This vote's going to happen Saturday night. I believe it's going to pass. It then doesn't matter if the House goes on vacation or recess, their job is done. The bill's then going to go to the Senate, and the Democrats control the Senate. So what Chuck Schumer's going to do is he's going to schedule the vote for Ukraine first. The Senate has to pass military aid for Ukraine, and then they'll allow the votes on military aid for Israel. And all we need are nine Senate Republicans to not join a filibuster. What the filibuster is, is you need 60 votes in the Senate to end debate. And if you can't end debate, the legislation is tabled. So as long as all the Democrats and nine Senate Republicans can get to 60 to not be filibustered, this is going to pass next week. This is going to pass next week. Biden's going to sign it. And within two weeks, uh, military aid from the United States will resume to the tune of $60 billion. <sighs> we tried. We tried what MAGA wanted. For seven months, the propaganda talking point has been, let's stop militarily supporting Ukraine, and then the war will end. Russia can finally win, and then we don't have to think or talk about this anymore. But they cut off military aid for Ukraine seven months ago. And in two years of fighting, in the Donbass region, this is Russia's number one priority, they've only advanced 14 kilometers. 
if you want this war to end, give Ukraine everything they need to end it. The Russian ground forces are incompetent. Two years of fighting, hundreds of thousands of people dead, and the Russians in the Donbass region have advanced only 14 kilometers without help from the United States the last seven months. So when we switch over to the Ukrainian side, Zelensky has signed a new mobilization bill into law. Ukraine's new mobilization bill is aimed at boosting troop numbers. I'm not an expert on this. This has been debated for over a year. It's a very long and complicated bill, but what it does establish is that all Ukrainian men aged 18 to 60 are required to update their status at a military enlistment office or through their online account. The law abolishes conscription and instead introduces basic military training for all men, five months during peacetime, three months during war. This is to avoid cases of unprepared men being sent to the front lines as cannon fodder. There are lots of countries around the world that do this. South Korea, for example, military service is required for all able-bodied men. They get the basics, so if North Korea ever tries something, they have a huge reserve pool of people to call up. Israel does this as well. I know maybe Finland and Estonia also do this. When you have a large, aggressive next-door neighbor threatening to kill all your people, this is just what you have to do to survive as a nation. What have people been talking about on the battlefields? Not much progress has been made because it's mud season, but Ukrainian long-range missile strike hammers Russian airfield in Crimea. Maybe attack them. Russian military bloggers, this is Rybar, believes this was a, an attack strike on this Russian airfield right here. But unless they provide pictures or videos of the debris showing it's an attack it actually doesn't have to be attack -ums. It is possible this was GLSDB. The range of GLSDB is 150 kilometers. This airfield technically was in range if the Ukrainians drove all the way to the riverbank with a M270. Either or doesn't really make a difference. Damage was severe. At this airfield, there were 12 Mi-28 Ka-52 helicopters, as well as an entire S-400 air defense battery system, worth half a billion dollars. And we do have this photograph showing the launchers and experts who have looked at it. It certainly does look like five out of five S-400 air defense launchers were destroyed in this attack. Was it Attackums? Was it GLSDB? Was it a domestically produced Ukrainian missile? I don't care. Let's just make it go boom. Let's get to the good news for Ukraine. According to the Czech government, the first shells from the Czech artillery shell initiative will begin arriving in June. So Ukraine has to hold on for another month and a half, and then they're going to start getting a lot of shells. The Czech initiative, they're saying 1.5 million shells, hopefully over the next six months. Denmark has announced their next military aid package worth $313 million. This is Denmark's 17th uh, military aid package to Ukraine. Thank you so much to the amazing people of Denmark. Italy signed an agreement and will allocate 45 million euros for the emergency and conservation work at cultural heritage sites uh, in Odessa. Last year, the Russians bombed the Orthodox Cathedral, uh, and Italy wants to help Ukraine restore this church. This story is incredible. In my last video, I showed a clip from Richard Woodruff. He's with Frontline Kit. He's a British volunteer in Lviv. And he's been organizing these five-day therapy retreats for wounded Ukrainian defenders. They get to go up to the Carpathian Mountains and um, 
go through some various uh, therapy exercises. But it's a good break for these guys just getting out of the hospital. So I mentioned the story, I asked if you wanted to donate, and you guys crushed it. The fundraiser was at, I don't know, like 1,700 pounds. Richard was looking for six or seven, and it's at 11,000 pounds. This, this is you guys. You guys did this. So what Richard's going to do is this uh, project was fully funded for the first 10 soldiers. He's already planning to organize another trip for another 10, and if the donations keep coming in, he's going to keep organizing more of these uh, therapy trips for Ukrainian defenders. So for everyone who donated, thank you so much. You guys are real heroes. And on this note, I want to share another clip from Nate Mook. He is a, an American aid worker volunteering in Ukraine. And one of the organizations he partners with is called the Superhuman Center. They help Ukrainian defenders uh, go through physical therapy and get fitted with prosthetics. So he wants to share one of the new facilities built uh, with the Superhumans Project uh, to help these wounded heroes. Hey guys, this is Nate. I am in Superhumans right now, standing in the rehabilitation area where the incredible heroes are working so hard every single day. Uh, we're here today for graduation. Uh, a number of superhumans are finishing their treatment, but I also wanted to share with you and show you uh, a new area. So we're on the second floor right now, and as you can see behind me, this is the reception area of this floor. Um, and as we walk down over here, such a beautiful space. We have the swimming pool back here behind this door. And as I cross over, I want to show you this brand new second part of the Superhumans facility that has come together. And it's just astounding to see the progress being made. So I'm standing now in the new foyer reception area, which you can see right here. And this used to all be outside. So this is gorgeous. You can see all of the light coming through and the new elevator behind me. The graduation just happened back here down these stairs in uh, this sort of central seating lobby area. As I walk over, I'm now walking into what's called the A block. So this uh, building was very, very old and has been completely redone and connected to superhumans. And in this area, you'll have different services like dental and eye doctors operating here. And then upstairs is where the surgeries will take place. So they have a brand new, incredible surg surgical area. And I'll share some photos of this down below. And then above that, there are places for patients to stay um, and recover. So just an amazing, amazing progress to see here at superhumans. And Truly, truly inspiring to see. So just wanted to share with you and talk to you soon. Bye. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth. Keep defending democracy.